Good morning, downtown Orlando. Come on, guys. We got a special guest all the way from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Good morning, downtown Orlando. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you so much for being here, and welcome to Mayor Buddy Dyer's 2012 State of the Downtown Address. It's great to see everyone back at Amway Center. You know, you like the way they sort of flip the switch on us. Last year, the stage was on that side. We were looking this way, and, you know, so we, we change it up a little bit. Uh, as usual, I have the pleasure of introducing Mayor Dyer for this, this wonderful address. And, Mayor, I, I don't know about you, but I'm really... I'm, um, I'm happy to get past all of those 14-hour marathon sessions where we've been rehearsing and training and practicing and rehearsing. And I never did learn all 24 of those zingers that they gave me. And I don't remember which one spins left or which spins. Wait a minute. That's tonight, isn't it? I'm sorry. Wrong event. Wrong event. Wrong event. Before I introduce the mayor, though, I'd like to take a moment and recognize uh, some of downtown Orlando's biggest supporters uh, who are with us today. Of course, the Community Redevelopment Agency Board is actually comprised of city council. And all six of our city commissioners uh, are with us today. And as I call your name, would you please stand and remain standing, and we will hold the applause to the end. Uh, District 1, Commissioner Jim Gray, our newest commissioner. District 2, Commissioner Tony Ortiz. District 3 Commissioner, of course, is the Honorable Robert Stewart. District 4, Commissioner Patty Sheehan. District 5, our longest tenured commissioner, Commissioner Daisy Lynham. And District 6, Commissioner Sam Ings. Ladies and gentlemen, this council continually demonstrates its understanding of the necessity of a strong and vibrant downtown and its vital importance as the nucleus of Central Florida's urban core. Let's show them our, our appreciation. Thank you all. Of course, forming a CRA requires not only city but county support as well. And also joining us today is Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs. Mayor Jacobs. Thank you so much. I'd like to point out that collaboration between your Orlando City Council and the Orange County Board of Commissioners has yielded tremendous results for downtown Orlando, including this wonderful facility we're in today, the, uh, the world uh, famous or soon to be world famous, world class Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts, and of course, our soon to be reconstructed, fully reconstructed Citrus Bowl and more. Citrus Bowl's coming, guys. Thank you all for your help. So, Mayor Jacobs and District 6 County Commissioner Tiffany Moore Russell, who is a member of the Community Redevelopment Agency Board and who could not be with us today, and to the other commissioners of Orange County Commission, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much for your leadership and your support. One more time for <laughs> Teresa Jacobs and the Board of County Commissioners. We're also joined this morning by former State Senator Lee Constantine. Lee, where are you out there? Well, it says here he's here. All right. State Representative-elect Victor Torres. And, all right, all right, and representing, representing Congresswoman Corrine Brown, uh, we have Ronita Sanders and Adam Benna. I saw Ronita. I know she's here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Florida Department of Transportation District 5 Secretary Noran Downs. Our good friend Noran Downs does so much, helps us so much. Noran, thank you so much, wherever you are out there. Also joining us today are Orange County property appraiser Bill Donegan. All right, Bill. And the Orange County, Orange County controller Martha Haney is here with us. Thank you so much. We have Mayor Bruce Mount of the city of Eatonville. Mayor Gary Brune of the town of Windermere. In the back. Thank you, sir. And Mayor Howard Shefferdecker of the city of Maitland. If there, are, if there are additional elected officials in the audience, would you please stand at this time and be recognized? Any additional elected officials? Okay. Thank you all for your support uh, of downtown Orlando. The spirit of collaboration and partnering between public sector entities and our private sector teammates creates a superlative environment of achievement in downtown Orlando. 
Hence, we have all the successes that you know about, Sunrail, Creative Village, and perhaps something very new and very special coming just across the way very soon. Stay tuned on that. But speaking of partners, for the past 51 years, downtown Orlando lovers have had the absolute best partners possible, the Downtown Orlando Partnership. So Kim, Buffy, and all of our friends at DOP, thank you so much for loving downtown Orlando, and thank you for all that you do. Let's hear it for the Downtown Orlando Partnership. Most CRA decisions are made based upon the recommendation of the CRA Advisory Board, a committed group which constantly monitors the pulse of downtown Orlando and works tirelessly to provide insight and direction for maintaining its plans and initiatives. Several of the members of the CRA Advisory Board uh, are here with us today. Again, please stand and remain standing. First, our Chair, Bernice Atkins Bradley of Bowdoin Construction. Let's see, Bernice. Thank you, Madam. All right. It's all right to clap for the chair. Our immediate past chair, Bill Diamond of Lowndes, Drostic, Drostic, Cantor, and Reed. <laughs> Board member Doug Taylor of Church Street Entertainment. <laughs> Board member Terry Delahante of Delahante Legal. And the newest addition to the board, board member Wendy Connor of True Marketing. Wendy, welcome aboard. And joining them are former board chairs, I believe Jennifer Quickly of WBQ Design and Engineering. Is Jennifer here this morning? There she is. Thank you so much. Friends, these downtown Orlando advocates have given and continue to give so that our beloved downtown can be all that we desire. Please acknowledge them once again with your applause. Thank you all for what you do for us in downtown Orlando. Thank you so much. Okay, I invite you all to take a look at some of the wonderful things happening in our downtown. You can do that simply by stopping by the Downtown Development Board booth on your way out this morning. Judy made sure that I said that. Downtown Orlando has weathered the economic storm of the Great Recession. Momentum is returning. I can, I can feel it and we see progress every day. Once again, it's an exciting time to be in downtown with projects under construction and more breaking ground. This, of course, did not come together by chance or happenstance. It results from inspired vision, precise strategic planning, and the social, political, and economic wherewithal to get it done, to make it work. Without question, the history and renaissance of downtown Orlando will always identify the master crafter of our redevelopment and revitalization as our mayor. During his time in office, Mayor Dyer has worked tirelessly to advance the shared vision he has developed with the Orlando community. And he has delivered, particularly for downtown. Under his leadership, downtown has seen unprecedented growth through all of the aforementioned projects such as community venues, Sunrail, Creative Village, Central Station coming, and more beyond that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and distinct honor to introduce our mayor, a true collaborator, an astute regional leader, and by the way, I, as you always know, the best downtown mayor in America today, the Honorable Buddy Dyer. Thank you, sir. Good morning. So would any, everybody that has not yet been introduced please stand up and be recognized? Okay, there are only a few of you, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to the Amway Center, home of this year's NBA All-Star Game and a place where 2.7 million people have enjoyed sports, entertainment, and community events over the past two years. You recall two years ago, we opened this building with the 2010 State of the Downtown Address. Our signature arena plays host to the annual celebration of downtown. And when I look out at this big crowd here this early in the morning, it's clear to me while you're here, you thought we were giving out free iPhone 5s. We're not. You're here because you have a special connection with downtown. You're here because you're invested in the future of downtown. And you're here because of a shared belief 
and the importance of downtown when it comes to our economy and our sense of community. Nine years ago this month, I gave my first State of the Downtown Address, and every year since, this event has provided a platform for our community to advance the vision we have for downtown. And much has happened since that first address back in 2003, both negative and positive. In those early days, success seemed to come easy. We doubled our skyline and tax base. We watched hundreds of new businesses open. But as the recession has gone on, we've learned to measure progress differently. We've had to focus on steady but important gains and long-term investments in our future. And today, four years after the start of the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression, our downtown remains an economic engine for all of Central Florida. It's an engine that is primed to help our city continue to move from recovery into prosperity. Everywhere you look downtown, there are signs of progress. More than 100 new businesses opened last year. Office occupancy is up 3%. Retail occupancy has remained steady at nearly 97 percent. Our residential apartments, 97 percent full. And there are seven major projects underway that represent an $800 million investment in your downtown. These projects will add another 650 residential units and 119 hotel rooms. Ten more projects are in the works that represent an additional $1.1 million investment. That was B billion. These planned uh, projects will add an additional 870 residential units and more than 400 hotel rooms. And the city's planning department reports that a number of projects that had been shelved because of the economy have been revived or reimagined. And just think, steps away from where we are, work is underway on SunRail. Fifteen months from now, we'll be able to board a train that connects our communities in the city of Orlando, Volusia, Seminole, Orange, and Osceola counties. SunRail will take cars off our roadways and generate 250,000 jobs and an $8 billion economic impact over the next 30 years. And we can't talk about economic impact in downtown without mentioning the Creative Village. Earlier this year, we imploded the Amway Arena in order to begin transforming that site into a live, work, learn, and play campus that's home to companies in cutting-edge industries like digital media and modeling and simulation. In the coming months, the first signs of construction will appear at the Creative Village site as we lay the foundation for our city's high-tech industry cluster. And there's more construction on the horizon with the expansion of Orlando Health and Florida Hospital, along with Central Station, which is near the courthouse and Lynx headquarters, and the new Magic Complex that's going to be right across the street. A refurbished Citrus Bowl is on the way. And that's thanks to the dedication of our sports community and our partnership with Orange County and Mayor Teresa Jacobs and the Orange County Commission. Thank you, Mayor. Later today, I'll help break ground on Sky House, which will be the first major residential high-rise built in Orlando since the recession hit. Another important sign that the tide is finally turning for our local economy and housing market. We've accomplished much in less than a decade, breathing life back into a downtown that was called a ghost town as recently as 2004. And as we celebrate what we've done to create a thriving nightlife scene and attract new residents and businesses, we also recognize that we have more work to do. And the top of our list of priorities includes taking steps to attract more families and continuing to provide more shopping and dining amenities for people of all ages. Now, downtown has always been a hub for entrepreneurship and innovation. And over the past few years, our urban core has taken a leadership role in one very specific area of innovation, and that's sustainability. And of course, sustainability is the theme of today's event, hence the green tie. And if you can't tell, it's a pink shirt for uh, Pinktober as well. In 2007, with the support of many downtown stakeholders, Orlando became one of the first cities in the southeast to adopt a comprehensive plan designed to create a more environmentally friendly city, and that's called GreenWorks Orlando. 
For years, Orlando has been the top city in America, the very top city in America, when it came to recycling our wastewater. And that's a distinction that we still hold today. And we use this as a starting point for our plan to reduce the use of our natural resources, save taxpayers money, and protect the environment. So in the span of four years, we've done much. We've reduced our energy consumption by 20% as a city government. We've built eight new LEED certified city buildings, including fire stations, and Fire Station One just received the LEED Gold designation and the award winning Amway Center. We've provided energy retrofits to more than 1,200 homes that help homeowners save an average of $166 a year on their power bills. We've added more than 19 miles of sidewalks and bike paths, making our city and our downtown more walkable. We put plans in place to offer our residents new and expanded methods of alternative transportation through the creation of SunRail and the expansion of our downtown bus circulator, Limo. We've converted our public landscaping to plants and grass that require far less irrigation, saving more than $500,000 a year. And we've begun to lay an electric vehicle infrastructure by installing 150 charging stations around the city. We conducted a green demolition on the Amway Center, which produced 80 million tons of recycled concrete that will be used for the Creative Village infrastructure. And we've acted as a catalyst for encouraging the owners of private business buildings and community facilities to achieve LEED certification, like the Orlando Science Center and the GAI building. There are now eight LEED certified buildings in downtown Orlando, including the OUC building. We've converted nearly all of our traffic lights to LEDs, which saves us about $350,000 a year in energy costs. Now, these initiatives and many others save the taxpayers more than a million dollars a year. And we're on target to reach savings of $3 million a year within the next two years. Now, that's real money, which can be used to pay for police, fire protection, parks, or ball fields instead of paying power bills. Now, I am fond of saying that success is not a destination, it's a direction. And the idea behind the first phase of Greenworks was to move our city in the right direction when it came to sustainability. Our goal was to lead by example and show that results make not only an environmental case for sustainability, but an economic one as well. And in so doing, we aim to encourage our residents and businesses to include sustainability in their decision making. So with your help, we have succeeded, and now it's time to build on our success. Today, we're excited to launch the next phase of Greenworks Orlando. We've partnered with former Orange County Mayor Rich Crotty to put together the city's first ever Greenworks Task Force. Thank you, Mayor Crotty, for your many years of service to our community. And thank you for helping to lead this important effort. Would you and all the members of our task force please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Mayor Crotty and our team of community partners will be tasked with first crafting and then helping to implement a set of new and ambitious green goals for our community. Goals such as performing money-saving energy retrofits on at least 50% of the homes in Orlando over the course of the next decade. Planning one new tree for every single person in our city with the goal of increasing our tree canopy from 23% to 40%. Developing a green building code that encourages developers to meet green standards. Establishing energy performance disclosures for homes and other buildings, much the same as a sticker on a new car explains how much gas it uses. Launching both bike and car sharing programs beginning in our downtown business district and continuing our investment in mass transit by working to connect SunRail to the airport and other destinations, expanding bus transit and studying future routes for east-west rail. 
establishing long-term carbon emission reduction goals, and partnering with OUC to make Orlando a solar leader and to reinforce our designation as a solar America city, helping to reduce emissions and create green jobs. Working with OUC to convert our street lights from traditional bulb bulbs to LEDs, which save significant energy and money, and installing the infrastructure needed to support zero emission electric vehicles. We're also working with OUC to make sure that our downtown venues, like this LEED Gold Certified Amway Center, are as energy and water efficient as possible. Taking these actions will build dramatically on the 11,000 green jobs that already exist in our community and put people to work. And finally, we aim to take bold steps to reduce the amount of garbage we take to landfills and increase the amount of goods that we recycle. On that last point, we have another exciting announcement to make today. Who knew that the most exciting announcement would be about solid waste and garbage collection, but it is. Beginning the first week of November, the City of Orlando will launch its new single cart recycling program. All right. At that time, all current residential recycling customers will begin receiving their new 95-gallon recycling cart. So say goodbye to those tiny red and blue bins and say goodbye to separating your recyclables. Instead, you can now put all of those recyclables into one giant teal or burgundy cart, depending on what day your recyclables are collected. And this change will allow us to double the number of people that recycle in Orlando and double the amount of material that we recycle. It will also save us about $125,000 a year. We anticipate that single cart recycling will be fully implemented citywide by Christmas. That's an applause line. Okay, there's no denying that our green goals are ambitious, and in order to make them a reality, it's going to take a true team effort. While Mayor Crotty and our task force will lead the effort, they will not be alone. We are incorporating a cutting-edge community engagement platform into the launch of the next phase of Greenworks. The city has partnered with a company called Mind Mixer to create a new residential engagement site that will allow us to better incorporate the ideas of our residents, for the future of sustainability and to enhance the way that residents can participate in the decision-making process. And through the site, residents will be able to play a role in the decisions we make about water, transportation, food, livability, solid waste, energy, growing a healthy economy. This tool has been used to help make land use decisions in California and to select routes for new walking and bike paths in North Carolina. And we could not be more excited to use this pilot platform to enhance Greenworks Orlando and continue the effort to better engage our residents in the work of our city government. Now, everybody that talked before me talked about partnership and collaboration. And we can't forget about the role of our federal government. And I know that sometimes the federal government is cast as the bad guy or the boogeyman. But make no mistake about it, our city's relationship with the federal government has helped us secure a number of game-changing projects, from SunRail to Create a Village to simply making sure that our police officers and firefighters have the tools and training they need to keep us safe. One of our strongest partners has been the federal government. And the same can be said about sustainability. We're working with our federal partners to help create and implement this next stage of Greenworks. Accordingly, we are very excited to have Nancy Sutley as our featured speaker this morning. Nancy is the chair of the White House Council on Environmental Quality. So in plain English, she's President Obama's top advisor when it comes to sustainability and environmental issues. Prior to serving in the White House, she was deputy mayor of Los Angeles. Her background in local government is one of the reasons I believe that this administration has been particularly effective in working with America's cities. It is now my privilege to introduce Nancy Sutley.
Well, good morning, and uh, thank you so much, Mayor Dyer, for having me here today and inviting me here to speak uh, at this great event and to be here in your wonderful city. It's really a great honor for me to be here uh, with all of you as you celebrate the great work you're doing to strengthen downtown Orlando. And thanks to the Downtown Orlando Partnership, and I know there's a lot of city and county officials here today. Thank you for all your work and to all of you. And clearly, this is a vibrant community uh, for residents, for businesses, and certainly a tourist destination for people from all around the world. And as we recover from the worst economic recession since the Great Depression, you're on track to make sure that Orlando continues to be a thriving and wonderful place to live. And the Amway Center is truly a, a great forum for today's event. Uh, the mayor uh, opened the new center at his State of the Downtown event two years ago, but it also captures, uh, as, as many uh, cities find, the excitement and vitality of downtown and of downtown Orlando. And as the first newly constructed LEED Gold certified NBA arena in the country, it symbolizes how the city is also a leader when it comes to sustainability. Mayor Dyer's Greenworks Orlando shows how cities can and cities across the country are seeing that sustainability can save money, can reduce pollution, and build stronger communities and stronger economies. And cities like Orlando are leading the way. Cities are no doubt are the economic engines for the United States and really for much of the rest of the world. Today, most people live, work, play and raise their families in urban areas, and this trend is only growing. And that means that the decisions that we make today about how to build, invest in, and support our cities will have effects for generations to come. And the mayor mentioned uh, before, I, uh, before the president asked me to chair the Council on Environmental Quality, I served as deputy mayor for energy and environment for the city of Los Angeles. So I know firsthand the challenges that, that cities and local governments face every day. And we also know that sustainable communities and sustainable economies really begin with those communities. Much of the important work on sustainability is done in cities. Cities like Orlando where you're making decisions about building codes and local transportation options, decisions on whether you provide incentives for solar panels on rooftops, uh, decisions about investing in, in public transit like the Sunrail line, and decisions on investing in water recycling. And cities like Orlando that are getting this right are setting themselves up for success for the long term by giving residents and businesses more options and by creating the jobs and industries of the 21st century in these communities. The President has been very clear that the United States needs to be the leader in these jobs and these industries, and not only for our own prosperity and our own security, but really for the prosperity and security of the entire world. And we can build them right here in places like Orlando and create the jobs that will restore a strong middle class as the backbone of our economy. So let me talk a little bit about what we're doing in the Obama administration, starting with energy policy. Since the day uh, the president took office, he's pursued an all-of-the-above energy strategy for the United States that focuses on responsibly developing every, every available source of domestic energy. This is a strategy that's aimed at reducing our reliance on foreign oil, saving families and businesses money on energy, and positioning the United States as the global leader in clean energy. So right now, oil production in the United States is at an eight-year high, and our dependence on imported oil has gone down every year that the President has been in office. And we'll continue to develop our oil and gas resources in a responsible way. But we, we know we also need to develop clean American energy, and we're doubling down on clean sources like wind and solar, and most importantly, on energy efficiency. 
We're already making significant progress, including uh, through an unprecedented $90 billion investment in the Recovery Act that has supported hundreds of thousands of jobs and helped to support some of the great initiatives here in Orlando. And in part because of this investment, uh, we have met the goal and that the President laid out in 2008, which is to double renewable energy generation in this country. Now, under this administration, for example, the Department of the Interior has issued permits for more than 6,500 megawatts of solar, wind, and geothermal power on public lands. And by the end of this year, we'll produce enough energy from these sources to power 3 million American homes. In August of this year, we finalized groundbreaking fuel economy standards that will double the fuel efficiency of our vehicles by 2025. These standards were developed with the support of the auto industry, and they'll save Americans $1.7 trillion at the gas pump. Thank you. They'll eliminate 6 million metric tons of greenhouse gas pollution and spur the kind of innovation that can, will continue the United States leadership position in advanced vehicle technologies and clean energy. And that's good for our manufacturing sector, it's good for American workers, and good for our economy. In short, this means that American families will be driving vehicles that can travel far farther on less gas and save money at the pump. In fact, by 2025, these standards will save consumers an average of more than $8,000 per vehicle. Now, these standards represent the biggest st step we have ever taken as a nation to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. The vast majority of oil that we use today is in the transportation sector, close to 70 percent. By 2025, these standards will reduce our oil consumption by more than 2 million barrels per day, which is about half as much as we import from OPEC each day. And these standards also represent historic progress in reducing carbon pollution and addressing climate change. They'll cut greenhouse gas emissions from these vehicles in half by 2025, and that's more than the total amount of carbon dioxide that was emitted by the United States in 2010. Now, 2025 might seem far away, maybe not, um, but today we're already seeing more fuel-efficient cars and trucks roll off the assembly line, thanks in part to standards that were first put in place in 2011. And that means savings for consumers right now. For example, four years ago, Chrysler didn't have any vehicles that got more than 30 miles per gallon. Now they make a half dozen. This year, Ford will offer a record-setting eight models that are expected to deliver 40 miles per gallon or higher. And General Motors announced that in March of this year alone, that, that month alone, they sold more than 100,000 vehicles that get 30 miles per gallon or better, which is a record uh, for the company. All of this means more jobs, lower gasoline bills, and a stronger American economy. And it also means less pollution in our economies. Now, as we make these crucial advances, it's important to remember that the government needs to practice what it preaches, and certainly Mayor Dyer has applied that principle here in Orlando, and the President has done the same for the federal government. In 2009, he signed an executive order that asked the federal government to set a high bar for our own operations and operate more efficiently and more sustainably. He asked us to set and meet aggressive goals for reducing our waste and our energy use and to leverage the purchasing power of the federal government to support the growth of clean energy industries and jobs right here in the United States. And we've made some great progress already. To name just a few examples, uh, we've completed the first comprehensive inventory of greenhouse gas pollution from federal agency operations. We've doubled the federal hybrid vehicle fleet, and, and all of our agencies are implementing their own comprehensive sustainability plans that capture a range of innovative ideas that are tailored to meet their unique circumstances and abilities. So I'll, I'll give you one example, and it's, 
it's one of the, not the usual suspects, and that's the Department of Defense. The Defense Department sees clean energy as critical to national security and to their mission. For one thing, volatility in global oil prices has a big impact on their budget. It diverts billions of dollars from operation, from operation budgets to increased fuel bills. And they'll also tell you that relying on oil in the, in the field poses a direct threat to our troops because delivering fuel puts them at serious risk. Now, the Marine Corps estimates that it suffers one casualty for every 50 fuel convoys in Afghanistan. So the Marines are doing some very creative things with renewable energy that's helped them to cut their overall fossil fuel use by 20 percent. For example, some companies are using flexible solar panels that can be rolled up and put in their packs, and it's allowed them to drop 700 pounds of batteries and cut down on dangerous resupply missions. And now twice a year, the Marines run exper experimental forward operating bases where they work with industry to test and develop other ways to use alternative energy in the field. Now, as a federal government, we're also tracking the performance of all federal agency through annual energy and sustainability scorecards that uh, were developed by the Office of Management and Budget at the White House. Now, all of those of you in government know that when the Budget Office calls, uh, agencies listen. This is a very valuable uh, tool for measuring how agencies are progressing towards their goals and recognizing where we have more work to do. For example, we know that reducing energy use in federal buildings um, is a very important thing to do, but it's also a challenge, especially when many of our buildings are decades old. And this is a challenge that's shared uh, not just by the public sector, but the private sector as well in our nation's commercial buildings. But the opportunity to save energy and to save money on utility bills is enormous. Uh, that's why the President launched the Better Buildings Challenge with the goal of making our commercial buildings 20 percent more energy efficient over the next decade and saving businesses 40 billion dollars a year in energy bills. The Better Buildings Challenge now has more than 110 partners who together have committed to upgrading 2 billion square feet of commercial building space across the country. And the federal government has stepped up as well with a $2 billion commitment to use energy savings performance contracts for federal buildings. That means no upfront cost to taxpayers. And it's a, these kinds of tools are um, very straightforward and common sense ways to cut costs, to waste less energy, and to support jobs in the energy retrofit market. And that's an option that cities and businesses across the country are taking advantage of and can take advantage of. And we know that cutting waste, saving energy, and integrating sustainability into our operations is more than just good policy, it's good business. And the federal government by far is not the first to discover this. More than 600 U.S. cities across the country have their own sustainability programs, and Orlando's is one of the strongest. Five years ago, as the mayor said, he launched Greenworks Orlando with what he called a vision to transform Orlando into one of the most environmentally friendly, economically, and socially vibrant communities in the nation. And that vision is so important. Um, Having worked for a big city mayor, uh, I know that the competition among cities is actually a really great thing, that everybody wants to be the greenest city. And as today, as you enter the next phase of the Greenworks Initiative, um, as the mayor said, it's really it's important to recognize the tremendous strides that the city has already made with planting trees and retrofitting homes to be more energy efficient the expansion in public transportation, uh, lead certified buildings, including the arena we're in today, and all resulting in the savings uh, to the city's uh, taxpayers. Now, we were here a few years ago um, and got to visit the state-of-the-art fire station downtown and see uh, the great work there. 
Uh, we also visited one of the water recycling plants, which uh, coming from Southern California, um, where water is always an issue, got me really excited. Um, my staff was not quite as excited as I was, but it was really tremendous to see uh, the work uh, underway there. And the Amway Center shows, I think, something we're seeing as a trend across the country, uh, that, uh, that uh, sports teams and arenas uh, know that sustainability um, is good for business, uh, it's good for their fans, it's good for the communities they're in, w that they're in, and their fans are expecting it. So this is just the beginning. Uh, you've set a number of ambitious goals to build on the incredible progress you've made and, in, and to ensure that Orlando remains a model for achieving the widespread benefits of sustainability. And the Obama administration is focused on supporting this kind of work however we can. We've created something called the P Partnership for Sustainable Communities, which has awarded more than $1.7 billion across the country to support resilient economies, healthy environments, and the quality of life in more than 550 communities. It, it's very important that one of the things that this initiative does is to break down the silos among federal agencies for housing, transportation, and environmental protection to coordinate the investments and policies that can help to support sustainable communities. Uh, this means supporting places that provide homes uh, for working families that they can afford, that promote the creation of jobs and services close to where people live, that offer clean transportation options and advance vibrant and healthy neighborhoods that attract economic activity. Now this is the kind of work you're doing here in Orlando and that's why through this partnership the Department of Housing and Urban Development last year awarded the City of Orlando two and a half million dollars to plan, to help to plan development around SunRail stops. And the Department of Transportation has invested $178 million to help build the first phase of SunRail because this is a project that makes sense for Orlando's economy, for the regional economy, and for your quality of life. We also understand here, that here in Florida and in states and cities across the country, the strength of your economy is strongly linked to the health of your natural resources. That's why the President has put so much focus on showing real and measurable progress in restoring the Everglades. Increasing federal funding, launching key construction projects, and working with the state of Florida and other partners to deliver results on the ground. We've invested $1.5 billion in Everglades projects and initiatives that will make a measurable impact on the ground, in including uh, starting key construction projects that will restore water flow and essential habitat. These projects have already generated 6,600 jobs in Florida and are expected to generate more. In, the, in this year's uh, budget, the President has requested an additional $246 million to build on this project, progress and to continue investment and partnerships and projects that will return the Everglades to health. So you should be extremely proud of what you've accomplished here in Orlando. Cities like this one serve as incubators for innovative ideas and policies that can go national. Meeting the sustainable, sustainability challenges of the future will demand innovation and ingenuity. And fortunately, that's something that we here in the United States have in limitless supply, and it shows in the work that you're doing. So thank you again uh, for having me here today. I really look forward uh, to seeing what Orlando does next, and we will continue to work with all of you to build a healthy and prosperous future for Orlando and for the United States of America. Thank you very much. Please, be, please join me again in saying thank you to Chair Sutley for being with us today and helping us launch this next phase of Green Works.
So this concludes our program this morning. I want to thank everyone at the Downtown Orlando Partnership for hosting this event every year. I want to recognize the sponsors that made the State of the Downtown Address possible, especially Siemens and OUC. And I want to thank all of our downtown businesses, both big and small, for their perseverance. Through our award-winning Buy Local Orlando program, businesses throughout the city have worked to encourage our residents to spend their money locally. We also want to recognize our downtown arts community for all the hard work that they do, from our new performing arts center set to open in 2014, to the new Mad Cow Theater, which opens this week. To Sea Art Orlando, which is our brand new public art project, downtown Orlando is leading the way to what will be a decade of arts in our city. And we can't forget to recognize our city commissioners again for all that they do for our city. And I also want to thank Mayor Jacobs and our partners at Orange County and all the other local and state elected officials who attended this morning for always working to move our community forward. And I want to single one out. Today is Orange County Comptroller Marty Haney's birthday. Marty, where are you? All right, so you know how much I enjoy singing. You guys ready? Happy birthday to you. Join in and drown, drown me out, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marty. Happy birthday to you. And I want to thank everybody else in the room for attending today and your commitment to downtown Orlando and our city. And finally, I want to thank all of the residents of Orlando. When I walk around downtown, I'm often approached by residents who want to give their mayor a compliment or usually some constructive criticism. But it's one of the best parts of this job. And your pride and your passion in our city is just infectious and inspiring. And it's because of you that I know we can accomplish not just these green goals we've laid out, but any goal we collectively set our minds to. So thank you very much, and have a great day in downtown Orlando.